Hello Grade Tens. In this video, we will look at financial documents specifically related to your personal and household finances. Without us realizing it, we are actually dealing with financial documents every day. Whenever money is involved, there is a record of the transaction. Even a till slip is a financial document. We are going to look at a few of the documents that are found in most households in South Africa. Perhaps you have seen some of these sorts of documents at home. A statement for a closing account, a receipt for buying prepaid electricity, a slip or statement from an ATM to show a withdrawal, a receipt for a cash payment, and a statement for a credit card. The most common financial document is a till slip. This is the slip that you get with your change when you purchase goods from a shop. It lists a number of important facts. Let's look at the till slip. Notice the business's name and its contact details. Here are the items that were bought and the number of each item. The till slip also shows which items are taxable and which items are not. Here is the total amount payable for all the goods and the method of payment, in other words, whether the goods were paid in cash or using a card. Financial documents can play an important part in personal financial planning and budgeting. Each financial document has unique characteristics that show us all the details of a particular transaction or expense. These give us, the customers, a record of our financial matters. It's important to check these documents for possible errors because mistakes may cost you money. It's also important to know how the calculations are made and to understand the terminology used. Take a look at the extract of a savings account statement. All bank statements have certain information printed quite clearly. The date or time period of the statement. The statement period is usually written in date format and has a starting period and an end period. Pay attention to the way it is written as sometimes only the day and month is written and the year is elsewhere on the statement. The type of transaction that took place and funds that came in or funds that went out. Some statements call these credits and debits. Credit means adding funds to the account, and debit means taking funds out of the account. When funds are credited, the balance increases, and when funds are debited, the balance decreases. The statement will also show costs that are charged for transactions. Each bank charges its own fees. These are the costs that are charged for any type of transaction that you do on the account. It's important to look at your bank fees so that you know what you are paying for each time. For example, when you withdraw money from the ATM, your bank will usually charge a fee. Drawing money from an ATM that does not belong to your bank can cost you far more than the normal fee that you would pay from your own bank's ATM. The opening balance on an account is the amount of money in the account at the beginning of the statement. The closing balance is the balance in the account at the end of the statement period. The statement also shows interest that is either credited or debited, depending on the type of interest that applies. Let's look more closely at the banking transactions that occurred on the 31st of July. One amount of 9,500 Rand and another amount of 11 Rand 53 cents were added or credited to the account. The account balance increased. You will notice here that fees were also deducted from an SMS notification and a debit order fee on the same date. These fees are according to the bank's fee structure. These debited amounts decrease the account balance. These costs are important factors to consider when deciding which bank to choose when opening your account. Clothing accounts are a very convenient way to buy clothes and other fashion items. Retailers make millions from consumers who buy on credit or accounts instead of paying cash. 
Some accounts offer a six-month interest-free option, while others offer an interest-bearing 12-month option called revolving credit. Here is a copy of Anna's clothing account. You will need to know how to identify and use the important information listed on it. All accounts have a statement date. Opening balance is the balance brought forward from the previous month's closing balance. Closing balance is the balance after all payments and purchases during the statement period have been calculated on the account. Credit limit means the maximum amount that a customer can buy on credit. Available credit is the amount of money that Anna can still buy on her account. Besides listing all the transactions on the account for the statement period, the account also states the amount due. This shows the amount that must be paid on the account on a certain day called the due date. At the bottom of the account, there is a large message offering an increase in her credit limits. This is usually offered to customers who pay their accounts on the due date. It is not always a good thing if you cannot afford the repayments. Finally, at the bottom of the account statement is a summary of the payments to date. In this summary, it would list any payments that are in arrears. These are payments that have not been made by the previous month's due date. Now that we've looked at a statement and an account, Let's investigate a handwritten receipt from a small business. Immediately, we can see that C. Barnard bought a B book from Grant Thompson for 200 Rand on the 25th of November in 2011. The name of the document is clearly displayed to show that it is a receipt. The number of the receipt, 2, is printed in the top right-hand corner. The date, also very important on financial documents, is written just below the receipt number. The name of the customer is written on the receipt. The amount paid is written in both words and numbers. The person who received the money and issued the receipt signs the receipts to make it official. Sometimes receipts or till slips are issued with conditions printed on the reverse side. Look at these conditions on this receipt's reverse side. You can clearly see the words refund and exchange policy to tell you what you must do if you are unhappy with your goods. They are usually printed in small writing, but even so, it is best to read this carefully. Thank you for joining me, Grade 10s. Remember, the tasks for this section can be found in the Finance Task video. You will also be able to learn more about finance on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.